Alright, here we are with Featherbent, Arc 1, Chapter 1. Let us begin an adventure. Seasons end, heralds the beginning of celebration. Citizens across the strata engage in long-standing tradition, filled with stories, drink, and song. Patrons of the damp underbrush take solace beneath the shade of their natural darkness, spending the day gathering friends and family under the leafy umbrella. Those how, no matter one station, you guys can read that. Across It'll be fine. <laughs> preparations for the sweep began precisely twenty-four Four days, days in, in advance. advance. A young man stands in his nest, and it just so happens that today is, is this, this young, young man's, man's preparation day. day. I see what you did there. Referencing the first page of Homestuck. Crafty. He whistles as he works, and he is still self-conscious of his song. Oh. The live-in population of sundries he's collected during his travels serve as his audience. Books are strewn across the desks. Captured firebugs hang from the ceiling. A teapot sits atop a small pit in the, the middle, middle of the, of the floor. floor. The understory tree nice and cozy, got it. <laughs> carries along once more. But suddenly, a familiar voice. voice. Careful who you let hear that, John. Wouldn't want to mislead a girl, would we? Oh, feisty. It's Mrs. Dragon Ball's earrings. <laughs> oh, right. I have to narrate. A slender hand with the blue painted fingernails curls around the room's entrance curtain. The luminescent mushrooms framing the doorway tint the outline of the young woman's silhouette ice blue. She is clad in the leather and loose cotton stylings of a legendary seafaring ancestry. With wings. Motherfucking Fucking wings. wings! Flying pirates, man! Treasure planet? Yeah, yeah basically. <laughs> Treasure planet. Flying pirates. I mean, I guess it'll just, let's see, how could we make a Homestuck fan fiction? Let's just have Homestuck. I'm sorry, was that actually something but that with it, wings. takes effort? <laughs> no, let's, let's just add wings to them. Probably it's a lot better than that, but you know, wings. Motherfucking wings. Can't get over it. They look wonderful. The art's very nice. The music is just... Dun, 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 dun. She gives an unwitting toss of silky raven hair, as wild as the spark in her eyes. And the smile she passes John glints brighter than the gold dangling from her ears. Orangey gold. Not really gold, just orangey. Orange. Hey, Riska! What are you doing here? What? Can't a girl visit her best friend without being interrogated? No! Now where are they? <laughs> Where's Rachel? Where is she? Oh, you know I didn't mean anything. Quiet. You're always welcome here. Always. Always. Come on in. She ducks upon entering the crook, her hard boots clicking against the wood as she walks. She ruffles her storm gray feather. That's not gray. That is distinctly I mean, that one's kind of gray. That, yeah, like those like three are gray. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she three. ruffled those feathers. <laughs> those particular feathers she ruffled. <laughs> I'm sorry to have ruffled your feathers. <laughs> Her storm gray feathers, sleek and preened, try to adjust to the humble space of John's nest. Her feathers are like 12 colors. I mean, they're just orange. <laughs> like, orange creamsicle orange. <laughs> creamsicle! Mmm, creamsicles. Yeah. yeah. God, I'm hungry. <laughs> A proud member of the hunting class, Vriska Sirkat belonged to an order different than John's. Those lowly non-hunters. Well, cause you too. Cause it's not a true Homestuck fan fiction without casual class racism. Hunter Master Race. Hype. Hype. Hunters were the predatory dominance whose government maintained a firm rule over the slaughter. By default, mm, a firm, firm rule. <laughs> can't go. We can't make it go limp. <laughs> By default, they were built larger, stronger, and much more fierce. <laughs> <laughs> With a culture that determines social status by feather cast, my feathers are prettier than yours, bitch! <laughs> caw, caw, motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> Ch 
John's order came in all sorts of colors. Vreska came in only 12. Only 12. Only 12. You gotta try a lot harder. <laughs> get good, scrub. Unable to get comfortable, Vreska scrunches her nose. Man, I still don't understand how you can live in such a cramped dump. I can barely stretch my wings in here. I don't know what you're talking about. This place is cozy. Ugh, and it reeks too. Everything smells like mud. How do you even get a mud smell inside of a tree? I mean, I can understand like at the bottom of a tree, but at the top of a tree? You, you would have to purposely have brought mud up to your house. At Good job, John. You don't have to worry about people challenging you for this place. I can't think of anyone who'd fight you over such a crappy nest, honestly. Dude. Dude. Dude, 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 dude. Sweet, dude. Sweet. What's mine say? Dude. What's mine say? Sweet. As mine say? Sweet. The yeah, Vriska, you don't do that. Cut me some slack, all right? This was my dad's place. It was probably dead. I've been trying to keep it looking good for when he comes back. Definitely dead. It's never coming back. Sorry, John. 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 He's dead. Your dad's been gone for, for like. like Five years. Five years, John. Five years. He's dead. Yeah, so? 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 <sighs> okay, then. Look, all I'm saying is that if you had a nicer nest, then maybe you'd have a pretty girl to spend a sweep with this year round. Because that's the only way you can get a girl to come home with you. A nice home. Because... Homes. I mean, besides you, it helps. Besides you, mm -hmm. <laughs> no, they're gonna fuck. Seriously, <laughs> I work. worry about you. Eh, it's fine. When was the last time you went on a date? Oh, that, that hit a little too close to home, Friska. When was the last time? Oh, well, funny. I know well, that feel. I... Uh... uh Alex, do you need a hug? Yeah, fine. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna hug me anyway, aren't you? Yeah, you're hug me. Yes, the nest is the only reason why girls do not like you. Well, well that. Oh, but wait, there's more! <laughs> Call right now and you'll see the other reasons why John can cannot get a date. Plus your unkempt feathers. And your messy hair. hair. And the fact you're kind of an asshole. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I mean, out of all those things, really, the most important one is... What's wrong with my hair? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Keep those priorities straight, John. <laughs> Some people like is, messy John. hair. Some people like assholes. You're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> they really love assholes. <laughs> Like, dear God, they really like assholes. Hey, I don't fuck you, you asshole! Guys That's what people do! <laughs> exactly! <laughs> fuck assholes! Obviously not. Uh. Uh. Hey! Why am I staying with you over the sweep again anyway? Weren't you seeing that one hunter a while ago? What's his what name? was his name Mamian. again? Thomas. Thomas. Travis. Touchdown. Travis Touchdown? <laughs> Sweet, you got the guy from No More Heroes here? Go! Oh! That was cool harmony. Yeah, yeah. But last time I remember, he didn't have wings. I mean, maybe. Ugh, but Alex, he cares about he's feather bent. He was about as much of a hunter <laughs> as I am a perch. Well, that's casual racism. Their conversation is interrupted by a high pitched whistling of a boiling teapot. I'm glad they put that sound effect in there. Because that's not grating on the ears at all. Thank you. Hey, look, your water's done. You know what would be perfect right about now? A nice cup of tea. I mean, I guess that's why I'm boiling the, the, the water. Because oh, tea. <laughs> sure thing. <clears throat> Let me get that for you. Wow. The pot is suspended over a special breed of reddish-orange heat-generating mushroom, whose collective warmth strengthen with their number. Mushroom, mushroom! We are many. We are legion. 
We are mushrooms. Better, 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 better. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> the pile inside that pit is just enough to get the water boiling, but not enough to start the communist mushroom uprising. Glory to our Stotska. One of these days. But yeah, oh, there's a feather bed. If you see that, communist mushroom uprising. Good. Quote me on it. Mm hmm? Friska folds her legs to sit before reaching for a silk pouch on the floor. John lifts the top of the teapot for her, and she carefully shakes out some of the teas, teeds, some of the some of the leaves from inside the bag. <laughs> <laughs> Once it steeps, the tea is poured into the only tube John owns, because John is a poor piece of shit that can't afford more than one, more than two cups. Come on, John, where's your cup game? Bitches aren't just gonna fly into your home if you only got two cups. What if she brings a friend? Then you have an awkward situation where you have three people and only two cups. Disappointed, John. It has been just the two of them for quite some time, if you know what I mean. May the sweet bring you May the sweet bring you such great heights, he laughs, raising his cup. Don't look down, she replies. Her smile crinkles the corner of her eyes as their cups clink. CLINK! Ow! <laughs> Ow, I just... Why did I do that? I'm wearing a ring. Oh. That hurt very much. <laughs> Ow! Ow! Gift. A token as thanks for providing nest during the festivities. A hunter with a fondness for It's tea. not a you video she unless you hurt yourself. Uh, <laughs> shop for. Yet Can't when win. the best leaves in a nation grow in a little known area, restricted as protected territory by the Imperial Guards, one what? must weigh the value of a token against the dangers of retrieving it. Possible death? Or tea leaves for a girl I might want to bang? The uh, answer to this conundrum is self-evident. Don't fuck up. He treads across the forest floor. Yeah. Our she boners is strong with this one. By Feathery boners. The lowest sort. <laughs> the forest floor sees very little sunlight. Get the tickle, tickle, tickle. No! I do not want to be tickled by a feather boner! <laughs> Visibility consists of Why won't you accept my love? Because your boner has feathers on it! <laughs> I thought that was pretty obvious and I was not down for that! Copy. In the thick, humid air. <laughs> Back to the game. As citizens of the strata are often reminded, a legion of Imperial Guards are stationed at the borders to keep the innocents out and to protect them from the violent, only the stealthiest. Yes. The, the bravest, bravest and, and the most, most cunning, cunning could possibly, possibly make through here. John but apparently John made it through, so fuck, <laughs> I guess that's not all true. John leads down to pick it up. Bright red. What a curious color. Red itself was by no means uncommon amongst first. Why hey, one of John's closer friends even sported them. Cause I'm not racist. Some of my best friends have red feathers. Yet never before had John encountered a shade so... vibrant. John glances up and catches sight of a matching feather caught in the branches of a bush up ahead. He collects it as well. Bright red is tangled in the massive gnarled roots of the tree. A few more identical feathers have gathered into a crook further down, with even more in the tall grass on the far end. If the gods never touch the floor, who did these belong to? Because apparently feathers just don't fall down to the ground. No. That'd be impractical. Mm -hmm. And not how gravity works. Obviously. The hunter's feather cast didn't come in red, which meant the plumage must have belonged to a fellow perch, someone of John's own kind. Dun, dun, dun. Another, <laughs> another perch made it down here too. A sudden jolt of excitement rushes through John as he continues, adding to the bouquet of a complete stranger's sheddings in the, <laughs> the, the least creepiest way. Cautious not to stumble upon the eyes or tail of anything deadly, he strays further away from his path in search of the soul, following the trail of red deeper and deeper in the congested mess of trees. There's a break in the forest. 
John reaches a small patch of clearing, illuminated by thin beams of sunlight piercing through the shadows. The space carries a strange sense of calm and serenity. A spotlight is of still have ha, hate still. You got this. A spotlight of still haven hidden deep within 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 the maze of wooded leaves. Do I need to get the grammar stick? <laughs> Red feathers litter the area. The source seems to be a visible opening at the base of a tree, just large enough for a person to squeeze into if they tried. A strange weapon rests in the grass nearby. Oh, a choice. Well, let's not fuck up. Uh, let's see. That's probably progression. And we don't want progression. Don't fuck up. Examine the weapon. Hella ugly. Not just ugly. Hella ugly. <sighs> you fucked up. How did I fuck? I did you not. fucked up. The hook blade is colored in stripes of white, green, and pink. What ugly colors do I have on a sickle? Who designed this crap? Excuse me. It is part of my winter collection of sickles? God, don't you understand fashion, John Egbert? And frankly, your judgment is making me really triggered right now. Oh. <laughs> triggered. <laughs> Check your privilege before you comment on my color sickles. John crouches down to peek into the opening made by the base of the tree. What lies beneath appears to be a small donut. It's difficult to see inside at first. He lets his eyes adjust. The dim light of a single dying mushroom glows softly in the far corner. In the opposite corner, however, rests a silhouette of a figure curled up within himself in a twist of cords and rags pour poorly fashioned to into a makeshift cloak. Whoa, you made it to the floor too? The Imperial Guards sure do suck at their job. Welcome to the government, John, where everybody sucks at their job. Nice to meet you. My name's John. John Egbert. What's yours? And what are you doing on the floor anyway? Look, you better not have taken all the good tea leaves. I woke up before dawn to make it down here. Silence. Ellipses, he said. You know, you aren't moving very really much. Are you, you dying, dying or something? something? God, Did John, you, you can't just ask you? somebody if they're dying. Well, I mean, that's actually probably a good thing to ask somebody. Because if they are dying, you could probably help. Also, did you fly all the way down here just to die? Nice sensitivity, John. Not that there's anything wrong with personal, personal preference, preference or whatever. But if I was dying, I'd do it somewhere way more hilarious. Like, up in a canopy fountain or something. Then I'd become a ghost and I'd haunt the fountain until they renamed it after me. Cause you know, that's the best way to- Well, you know, that actually probably is the best way of dying. Just fucking plummet into the earth and land in a fountain. And then just have your ghost haunted until they renamed it after you. Like, hey, hey, did you gonna name the fountain after me yet? Huh? Huh? And then you can just do that for all eternity. Motherfucker, I am not Steve. That guy died here a week ago. No. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't got nothing on me. me. <laughs> Still nothing. Did we just meet a silent protagonist? This, I get. Look, okay. all I'm saying is that this is a really crummy place to die, and you probably should- I'm sorry, did you expect a lame protagonist that actually said words? Mm. I'm not dying, you dumb fuck. Oh, he speaks! He lame. knows of the words. Lame! So you did take all the good tea leaves. Obviously! Because if you're in the forest, you are either dying or looking for tea leaves. Only two options. Even the Imperial Guards guarding it. They're just there for the tea leaves. Or... To die. Either or, really. What? No, I don't even drink tea. Blasphemous. Hmm, you know, for a couple of seconds there, I thought we could actually be friends. Yeah, then you started talking, and I realized you're kind of an asshole. Is there something you wanted to accomplish by coming here, besides making my already unyielding state of misery marginally more difficult to deal with? Nope, that's pretty much the only reason we came here. Well, the sweep's coming up. I need to grab token for my friend Briska and the best tea leaves grow on the forest floor. Obviously. Token, you're not from around here. We don't take too kindly to strangers. How did you make it past the guards? Uh... They keep their rotation schedules pretty tight, tight. but there's a path around the back that you need some pretty sharp maneuvering skills to get past. Because remember, few hours both ways. no matter how tight it might be, 
you can always have an easier time coming in from behind. Yeah. And be careful not to hurt yourself. Because that'd be bad. Thankfully, I'm pretty much the best flyer I know. Good for you, John. Good for you. How did you make it past the monsters? Monsters? 